It's one verse of scripture. And so Pilate, willing to content the people, released Barabbas unto them and delivered Jesus when he had scourged him to be crucified. And I want to use this tonight, and with the help of the Lord, I want to preach on a message entitled, I'll Trade with You. Thank God Jesus is willing to take our place. Yes. Let's go ahead and look to the Lord in prayer, and Reverend Coker, sir, will you pray for us? Wonderful, Father. Again, we thank you for this time of worship for each one that's here, Lord. God, again, help Pastor Pope as he preaches your word. Speak to hearts by the power of your eternal spirit, your eternal word, and just have your way in this service tonight. Amen. 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 Thank God Jesus traded with you and I. Beyond any shadow of a doubt, we got the good end of the deal. Yes, we did. And we've been doing we've been doing that since we were kids. Remember being a kid? And uh, I'm not condoning uh, Halloween. You know, we don't celebrate it. We know the origins of it. But when I was a kid, I didn't didn't, and uh, my family didn't. And we went out and we did our little trick or treat thing. Mm -hmm. And you know, little kids, most of them don't know what's going on. They don't know where it comes from. What they can, don't know what candy? They, they shouldn't. Uh, be doing that, but they just want candy just like I did. And we'd go out and we'd get our candy, and we'd come home and we'd sprawl it all over the floor, <laughs> me and my brothers and my sisters, and maybe there was a certain kind of candy that you liked that they didn't, or vice versa. And we would say, I'll trade with you. I'll give you these nasty uh, butterscotch candies, and you give me those caramels if you don't like, or whatever the case may be. We wanted something that Twins they had, and, and that they wanted something that we had, and we traded with one another. Many times you were willing to make the trade because you thought you were going to get the better deal. Okay, So we traded with one another. We've all experienced this. We would experience it now. You know, people show us a kindness. Uh, I was in the store the other day. I think I had one thing in my hand, and there was a person in front of me. They had at least one cart. Not two. I don't remember. There were so many people lined up. This time of year, you go to the store, you can go ahead and rely on the fact that you're going to wait. Because there's a lot of people shopping. But somebody was nice enough to say, hey, I'll trade with you. You get up front, you go next, and I'll wait. I got all this stuff. You got one thing. Go ahead and go. That was kind, and that was a blessing to me. And uh, we've done that. You've done that. Okay. Thank God for the kindness. And uh, we should endeavor to be kind to other people too. You know, somebody's good to us, we can be good to them, or we can be good to others. Okay, something simple like standing in a grocery store line with one item, okay, and somebody lets you go ahead of them, or something uh, a lot more serious, brother and sister, a lot more serious. We yesterday celebrated, or not, I don't know, that's not the right word, we remember uh, December 7th, 1941, where uh, almost 3,000 uh, men died there in Pearl Harbor. Okay, people that were willing to lay their lives down for our freedom. Amen. And many more after them, as war was declared and got involved in the in World War II. Many, many uh, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people died and gave their lives. They were willing to do that. They were willing to put others first to make a sacrifice that you and I could be free. Amen. Thank God for that, brother and sister. Thank God that there were those that were willing to do that. And more importantly, thank God, brother and sister, that Jesus was willing to make the ultimate Amen. sacrifice yes. and to lay down his life and to put you and I first. Amen. Amen. And give his life for you and I. He was willing to do that. Nobody made him do it. He wasn't forced to do it. He did it willingly. We have so many examples in the Bible of Jesus putting mankind first. Trading places with mankind, okay, taking our place, brother and sister, though we were the ones that were lost in sin. He is the one, the sinless Son of God, who came and took our place in judgment. We deserve to be judged for our sin. We're the ones who did it. Okay? But Jesus is the one that was willing to come and live a sinless life and offer that sinless life as a willing sacrifice upon the cross. 
for all of us. Amen. So that we wouldn't be lost in judgment. That we would be set free. Amen. And we would be set free. The Bible tells us about his willingness and what he did for you and I. We can go to Isaiah chapter 53. And beginning in verse 3, listen to what the Bible says. He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows. He's talking about Jesus. Acquainted with grief. And we hid as it wore our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearers, he is dumb. He opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he, was ma and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. When, shall, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied, and by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Amen. Brother and sister, he was willing to go through all of that for you and I, he was willing to bear it all. Amen. And because of that, the anger of Almighty God, God the Father, has been satisfied Amen. in the punishment that was taken out for you and I upon Jesus. Amen. God is satisfied with his sacrifice. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, speaking of Jesus, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Brother and sister, you and I, as we read there out of Mark chapter 15 and verse 15, we can read more about Barabbas, and we know that he was not only an insurrectionist, he was a murderer. Yes. Brother and sister, he was a murderer. But this one who deserved judgment, just like you and I, this one that was guilty beyond any doubt. There was no doubt of his guilt. He was already, brother and sister, uh, judged to, to be put to death. But oh, thank God. Thank God. Just like him, you and I know we were guilty and we deserve to pay for our sin. Yes. Jesus interceded. Amen. We were set free. Yes. And Jesus took our place. We were just as guilty. Well, it's just a Romans chapter 3, beginning in verse 10. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. Their poison of asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the ways of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Brother and sister, people have this false notion, well, you know, mankind is basically good. No, he's not. Mankind is a sinner, brother and sister, that is absolutely living their lives contrary to God. All of mankind, there's none righteous, no, not one. And there's only one way to change that. It's for you and I and any other human being to repent of their sin yes. and to turn to the Lord, not only for his grace and his mercy, but for his lordship in their lives. Yes. And thank God we can. 
Romans 3 and 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 5 and 12. One, wherefore, is by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. Brother and sister Barabbas sinned, and he deserved judgment. You and I sinned, and we deserve judgment. But judgment was taken out on Jesus. Do we uh, appreciate what Jesus has done for you and I? Did Barabbas appreciate the fact that he was guilty, brother and sister, and deserved death and was going to die, but Jesus took his place? Did he? We don't know. The Bible doesn't tell us. But you know what? You and I can be thankful. Amen. You and I, brother and sister, can absolutely value and appreciate what Jesus has done for us. And we're going to tell you how. How we can do that, brother and sister. The Bible tells us, and we've preached about her before, about a woman that was caught in the very act of adultery. Okay? Now we know, according to the Bible, it's God's word, it's true. It doesn't matter what society says. It doesn't matter what our opinion is. We know that sex outside of marriage is a sin. Yes, it, it is. is wrong. Amen. Amen. Can I get a witness in the house Amen. of the Lord? Amen. If you're not married to someone, you have no business having sex with them. You are committing sin, and you are not going to go to heaven that way. Right. Okay, all you got to do is go read the book of Galatians chapter 5. Go look at verse 19 and 20. You can go over to, I believe it's 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. It will tell you the same thing in many other places in the Bible. Sex outside of sin is a, sex outside of marriage is a sin. You get that right? And, brother and sister, he tells us that we are not going to enter into the kingdom of God doing that. Right. Okay? That's old fashioned. Well, how old is God? God is the one that ordained it. God ordained marriage between a man and a woman. That's it. In the beginning, God created them male and female. Jesus reiterated that, and he said, A man shall leave his mother and father and cleave unto his wife. A man and a wife. Doesn't matter what society says, brother and sister. Let God be true and every man a liar. Well, this woman was caught in the very act. And it was punishable by death. By death. They said to him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down, and with his finger wrote on the ground, though he heard them as though he heard them not. And this is because somebody asks you something. doesn't mean you've got to answer them. Maybe it's none of their business. What's your answer? None yet. None yet business. Okay? All right. Okay, so he stood down as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And he stooped down and wrote on the ground again. And they which heard it, being convicted in their own conscience, went out one by one beginning at the oldest, even until the last. And Jesus was left alone with a woman standing in the midst. And Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman. He said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Had no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Are you with me today? Amen. Yes, he gave her another chance, but he explicitly told her, don't do it anymore. You know, when God forgives you, it's not an opportunity for you to keep living your life in sin. It's an opportunity for you to start fresh, to start over, and to do right by God. If we were to go on, okay, we go into the next chapter, okay, we go into the next chapter, what does, or continue on, uh, in this chapter, and it continues on the next one. She said, No man, Lord, neither do I condemn thee, and, and go and sin no more. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. I'm walking in darkness. 
You're not following the Lord. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Come on now. We don't continue in sin. We repent of sin. We turn away from sin. We begin to follow Jesus. Jesus ain't going to lead you into sin, my friend. He's going to lead you out of it. Praise God. He's going to lead us out of it, brother and sister. He'll do it every time. Okay? He said there that he that followed me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of light. If you're doing something that is wrong, if you're doing like this woman, living in adultery, living in fornication, you need to stop. It'll send you to hell. Jesus will forgive you tonight, but you need to stop doing it or any other sin. Can I get a witness? Amen. In the house of the Lord, amen. Well, brother and sister, he did this. And he he used wisdom. And he, uh, by getting rid of all the accusers, gave her the opportunity to be given another chance. There was no one that could accuse her. And according to the law, you can't condemn somebody to death unless you have people that are witnesses against the person. Right. They had all left. Okay, and left her alone with the Lord. And he gave her another shot, brother and sister. He forgave her. Well, just like with Barabbas, we don't know. I hope that she went out and obeyed him and sinned no more because Jesus set her free just like he set Barabbas free. Yes. Just like he set you and I free. Amen. You know, we're to go and sin no more. Amen. We're to be thankful for what the Lord has done for you and I. Yes. We love him because he first loved us. Amen. Are we thankful, brother and sister, that Jesus took our place? One more account from the Word of God, and I'm getting ready to close after this. Oh, okay, you'll come. Okay? He entered into a certain village. Luke chapter 17, beginning in verse 12. And there met him ten men that were lepers, not leopards. Okay? They weren't full of spots and going around acting like cats. Okay? They were lepers. They had leprosy. Ten of them. And he entered into a certain village, and there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. Now, this disease made them unclean. They didn't, you know, we, we, we're familiar with this. People have, uh, especially getting through this COVID garbage that we've just gotten through the last couple of years. People who kept away from people. They, they uh, uh, quarantined themselves and things like this. Well, people that were leprous, that were not supposed to come around other people. And that's why they stood afar off. Okay, they, he met these men and they stood afar off and they lifted up their voices because Jesus was far away from them and said, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass as, as they went, they were cleansed. They obeyed the Lord and did what the Lord said to do and they were cleansed. Amen. Thank God, wherewith shall a man cleanse his way? By taking heed unto the word of of Almighty God. Thank God for the word of God, brother and sister. Amen. They were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, at Jesus' feet, giving thanks. And he was a Samaritan. He wasn't even a Jew, brother and sister. He was a half-breed. He was someone that people looked down upon. But he knew that God had done something for him. And he kneeled down at the feet of Jesus and he thanked him and he praised him, brother and sister. And Jesus answering said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger or accept this stranger. And he said unto him, arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. God has done something for us, brother and sister. Amen. He has cleansed us. Yes. He has healed us. Amen. He's forgiven us. Amen. He's made us whole. Amen. I'm not going to let somebody else praise God in my place. I'm not going to let somebody else thank God in my place. I'm not going to let somebody else serve God and live for God in my place. I want to thank God. I want to worship God. I want to praise God. I want to live for God for what he has done for me. Amen. He took our place. 
Then said those Jews which believed on him. They then said Jesus to those Jews. Back to John chapter 8, after this situation with the woman that was caught in the act of adultery. He said to them, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We continue in the word of God. We don't just come and say, God, forgive me, and go out and live contrary to the word of God and forget about what God has taught us and what we pray. Brother and sister, we remember what God has done for us. We remember the grace and the mercy that God has extended to you and I. We remember the prayer and the promises that we made to God. We made the promises. We came and prayed and said, God, I'm not going to do that anymore. God, I won't be like that anymore. God has kept his word to you and I. Let's keep our word unto Almighty God. Let's keep our word to God. Let's be good to God. God has been good to you and I. He's been gracious. He's been merciful. He has set us free. And whom the Lord has set free is free indeed. Tonight as we bow our hands and we close our eyes in reverence to him. My wife begins to play and sing. We're going to come and pray. Jesus took our place. Brother and sister, we owe it to him. To live our lives according to his word and his will. We're going to come tonight and we're going to pray. We need to repent of sin in our lives. Let's do it tonight. Let's make things right and let's go and sin no more. Let's come and pray. God bless you tonight is our prayer.